here in the book of Hosea, chapter number 2, and verse number 15, the Bible says, And I will give her her vineyards from this. And the valley of Achor, five people shot Achor. Achor. Mm -hmm. He says, The valley of Achor for a door of hope. Uh -huh. Now, Achor means trouble. If you look up the translation of it, it means trouble. And so that's where transformation comes in. He says, I'm going to give you, amen, from the valley of trouble for a door of hope. He says, I'm going to cause a transformation to take place. I'm going to take your trouble. I'm going to take your hardship. I'm going to take your, amen, the, the, the issues in your relationships and the problems in your family. And let me pause right there because prophetically God told me to tell you, amen, that the family fight is the last fight. Amen. Somebody got to get happy right there. Amen. Because we had to go through in our finances and we got over that. We had to go through in our personal relationships and we got over that. Amen. We had to go through being ostracized and criticized and talked about and blogged on. Y'all ain't talking here, but we got over that. Uh-huh. But the final fight that many of us, and if you're in that fight now or just recently come out of it, I want you to know you're right on time. But God said the final fight for you is the family fight. Somebody say the family feud. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Amen. The family if you, that's the last test you gotta pass, amen, because God says, amen, the closest people to you are the ones that hurt you the most. Y'all know when they lied on you in the streets, you, that didn't bother you that much. Come on here, you read some stuff on Facebook, that didn't bother you that much, but when your own brother, and your own sister, your mother or father, amen, your, your, your grandmama here, y'all, come on here, your cousin and Juma, when they start turning against you, when they start coming up against you, it starts to hit home, and it starts to hurt and sometimes many of us have had to cry. I'm not an emotional man, but uh, uh, earlier this year I had to shed some tears over some stuff. I ain't going to talk about earlier this year. How about three days ago? I got a phone call, amen, that upset me pretty bad. But God said, hold your peace and let me fight your battle because if you can get past the family attack, it's all good from here. I found somebody prophesying to him and tell him it's all good from here. and your financial predicaments, he says, all of the trouble uh -huh, that you've seen or all of the trouble that you have faced or that you have been opposed by, he says, I'm going to give you, I'm going to cause transformation to take place in the valley of trouble I'm going to turn into a door of hope. Uh -huh, so every area uh -huh, that you had to cry about and every area, uh, God, like my mama said, make your heart bleed in every area that you lost sleep over, God says, because you decided to stand. See, some of y'all praise him tonight when you really didn't feel like it. Some of y'all praise him tonight when your situation back home telling you to go somewhere, run and hide and cry. But because you made a conscious decision to give God glory anyhow, in spite of what you're dealing with, and in spite of what's in front of you, in spite of what you see, God says, now I'm going to cause your trouble to shift to a door of hope. Talk back to me. To a door opportunity to a door of release, to a door of favor. Somebody shout a new door. A new door. And I'm taking yeah. your door of trouble and I'm transforming it uh -huh. or I'm changing it into a door of opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trouble brings tears and, and misery and pain. Hallelujah. But God says in the transformation, I'm going to bring singing and celebrating and praise. Somebody ought to talk back. Amen. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to be so good to about nine of you. Amen. That you're going to look back over everything that you cried over this past year. Amen. You're going to look back over everybody that made you hurt and cry. See, when you don't stand up and have to defend yourself and you let God fight for you, God said, I can get glory out of this thing now. Come on here. I can get some glory. Situation. Tell your neighbor to hold your peace. God's fighting for you right now. Uh, give me about six minutes, bro. Amen. And I'll be ready for you. Amen. Let's go quickly to Psalms 84. Psalms 84. We talked about the valley of Acorn. Somebody say the valley of Acorn. That's the valley of trouble, but also transformation. All right. Psalms 84, verses 5 through 7. The Bible said, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, talking about the Lord, yeah. and whose heart are the ways of them. 
Verse 6 says, who's passing through. Somebody say, who's passing through. Uh -huh. Who's passing through the valley of Baca, uh, making a wail. Amen. The valley of Baca, Baca is simply weeping. Amen. It means weeping. So, amen, we've come from a valley of trouble into a valley of sorrow. Y'all ain't talking. Amen. A valley of tears, a valley of weeping. Amen. Valley of Baca is the valley of weeping. But God said, blessed is the man who's strength is in thee because the joy of the Lord is our strength. He says who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. Amen. Uh, God told me to tell you that he's getting ready to deal with your attitude because the truth of the matter is many of us have not seen change because it hasn't taken place in our mind yet. Amen. Uh, uh, we come to church and we go through the motions but we go home and still face the same issues that we had to see. Amen. Or that we faced before we got to church but God says now I'm doing something in your mind. I'm doing something amen in your mentality. I'm doing something in your attitude because the Bible says so as a man thinking so is he. So uh, uh, many of us have seen trouble because we think trouble is coming. Amen. We don't think it's going to get any better. Matter of fact, uh, if we look at it out, out of our natural eye, common sense tells us it can't get no better. Amen. But some of us say, you know what? We're not walking by what we see. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're not walking by sight. We're not walking by a natural sight, but we're walking by faith tonight. And so God says that if you can walk by faith, he says, I got to change your attitude. I got to find out how you see your current situation. Amen. Do you walk to the mailbox expecting bad news? Do you walk there expecting bills? Come on here. Amen. Or do you walk there expecting to be set free? See, 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 we got to get our attitude together. Uh, I got a letter in the mail a little while ago, Bishop, and I didn't open the letter because I I already knew the contents of it, and I didn't want to get depressed, so I didn't open it. I just took the letter, I took a black sharpie, and I wrote on top of it, canceled. I wrote on it, terminated. I wrote on it, case closed. Y'all, come on here, and, and, and I'm going to believe God, hallelujah, as often as I go to the mailbox, I ain't going to see that letter no more. Hallelujah. So how is your mind, how is your mindset concerning what you're dealing with? Uh-huh, many of you are living from paycheck to paycheck because uh, soon as somebody come to you to ask for something, you say, I ain't got nothing but a little bill money. And that's why you ain't got nothing but a little bill money because you keep speaking that out of your mouth and that's your attitude and your mentality. Oh, God, but uh, I'm getting ready to live a life. Y'all ain't gonna get with me here. Hey, Amen. to where I don't even let them have to balance my checkbook. Why? Because my mentality tells me that overflow is in my bank account. Oh, God, somebody help me praise him now. Amen. I believe that we're getting ready to walk in things and we're getting ready to possess some things that we're not qualified for. Come on here, amen. We ain't got enough money for it. We don't have enough education for it. But God said you got enough faith for it. And we read in the Bible where God talks about the size of mountains that we have to speak to, but he talks about the size of your faith. He said if you can have the faith of the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to big things, you can speak to mountains, which you should have to cross over or hike up or go around. He says, I'm going to give you the ability to speak to it, and guess what? It's got to get up out of your way. I don't know what your mountain is tonight, and I don't know what your issue is tonight. Thank you. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight, but look at somebody and tell them the way my faith is set up. Stop you anymore. 
Bible said, y'all sit down, y'all making me nervous here. Bible said, uh, he said, uh, make it a well. Uh -huh. The rain also filleth the pools. He says that when you allow your faith to work for you, and you allow uh, what should be a place of weeping, right. yeah. what should be uh, a, a, a place of crying and sorrow, when you allow it, amen, to cause change to come into your mind, yeah. and when you can make it a well, when you can take what's bad and turn it, I told you this is a night of transformation, when you can take what should be weeping and turn it into joy, come on here, I, I look at somebody and just tell them good morning, and, and, and the only reason I'm telling you that at 9 or 5 p.m., because weeping endures for night, but joy comes in the morning, and the way my prophecy is set up the night, I don't go by that cup, but spirit. Hey, and look at somebody and tell them good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Make it the rails. Now, yes. Thank you. now, I was at uh, Applebee's a little while back, and uh, the first thing the lady came up to the table and said, she said, we got uh, uh, well, well, well drinks or whatever. Hey, Amen. Two for one. Now, my sister jumped on that. <laughs> but she, some of y'all said, Ooh, yeah, my sister don't, you know, she ain't, she ain't that saved to some of y'all, amen, hallelujah. Yeah. So she jumped right on that. Two for one. Now, I jumped on it revelation-wise. Because uh, I said, a well draft, amen, a well drink, amen, that means it comes from a well, amen, and then two for one. So what are you saying, prophet? I'm trying to tell some of y'all you about to get double for your trouble tonight. See, I got three witnesses. Come on here, amen, the well is two for one for you tonight. Touch the light until we get double. Real quick, real quick, real quick, let's go to Ezekiel. I'm getting ready to close. Ezekiel, chapter number 37. Very familiar passage of scripture. I promise y'all I'm getting ready to let you go in a few minutes. Ezekiel 37. So somebody tell them the valley experience. The Bible says in Ezekiel 37, starting at verse number one, the hand of the Lord was upon me. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry look at somebody and tell them the valley experience, the valley experience. Mm -hmm. again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord I'm trying to set some of y'all up for something right now. Right. Amen. Let's drop down to verse number seven. God told him what to say. Amen. And he said, verse number seven, he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Uh -huh. And behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Verse number eight, and said, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came uh, uh, came upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Yeah, Verse number 9 said then he said unto me prophesy unto the wind mm -hmm. prophesy son of man preach to yourself and say to the wind thus said the Lord God come from the four winds or breath and breathe upon these slain yes, uh, yes. that they may live. Yes, yes. Y'all understand yes. here that when we are uh, going through our valley experience amen. Yes. Some of us can testify that our valley of ache or, or trouble have presented itself and our valley of baca or weeping has presented itself and, and, and now many of us can testify amen that the valley of dry uh, bones. Look at somebody tell them it gets dry sometimes you know. Amen. You suffer dry up and your resources dry up. Amen. Some of your anointing are dried up. Y'all ain't gonna talk. you get it back tonight. Amen. Some of your joy are dried up and your peace are dried up. But, 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 but I gotta let you know here tonight that God says that I'm gonna put something in you tonight uh, that you can open up your mouth and begin to speak in the midst of the valley of dryness, y'all. Come on here. In the midst of the valley of that what you're dealing with right now. He says, uh, but you gotta prophesy to the winds, the four wind. See, the reason some of you haven't seen anything yet, because you have not opened up your mouth. Stop waiting on somebody to call you out. Come on here and lay hands on you and tell you what thus said the Lord. Amen. You better learn how to start speaking over yourself. It's quiet right there. Amen. Because many of y'all waiting on somebody else to do it, but I've come to tell you, in this season of your life, you gotta learn how to open up your own mouth. Come on. You need a call? Open up your mouth. Come on here. 
go to the car lot, lay your hands on it. Amen. I told Dad, I said, take me by this particular place, let me lay my hands on it. Amen. I believe that the kind of favor, y'all, come on here, that's on my life is going to be released. Look at somebody and tell them in this season of your life, it might be dry right now. You might have had some trouble. You might have had to cry some tears, but tell them, oh, God, I got a word for you tonight. And the word is prophesy. Come on, some of y'all want to do it anyway. Come on here, prophesy. You got to learn how to open up your mouth and speak something that you might not be able to see. You got to learn how to speak those things that are not as though they were. You know, somebody tell them, I'm about to start speaking now. No, uh, come on here. got nothing to do with no engagement. It's nothing to do with no assignments or revivals. So, well, look at your own condition, your own situation, your, your own household, and your own environment, your, your own atmosphere. Walk the house. How many you know, last time? When's the last time you walked the floors uh, in your house and commanded change to be in the room? When's the last time you walked up in the hospital and commanded uh, somebody to be here? Surrounding counties, come on here. Amen. I want them to drive from Atlanta. Come on here. Amen. I believe in God that the very things that we open up our mouth and prophesy, God told me to deputize you tonight because that's an anointing that's manifested in your life. And if you just speak it over the next three days, tell somebody the kind of faith I got tonight that if I speak it tonight, I'll probably see it tomorrow. Y'all ain't gonna have no church with me. I said it.
the dryness. God said, make it a well, and I'm going to make it rain in your life. I wish I had somebody to throw their hands up and shout up. Tell them I'm going to 